Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at what it's going to look like when we finished our um, SketchUp drawing. Just kind of a, a rough idea. So we start by getting the floor down and make some walls here. Uh, I'm also going to kind of show you why we need to keep everything separated into groups and how it's going to make our life easier as we keep adding objects to our model. Uh, so just using the push pull here to get some height to my walls, throw a window in. Make some guidelines so I can see kind of where I want to put the window or push push pull to go right to the other side of the wall. Uh, now we're going to make some tags here and put our walls and our floor into a group so that we can draw on and around them and not have to worry about anything getting stuck to them or anything tense is getting jammed up. Now here, it wasn't really being cooperative when I pasted, so I just have to paste in place. Sometimes it's easier just to do that in the first place. And now I'm double checking my layers to see that, that everything's on the right layer. And you can see how the, for some reason I left this square behind. So right now I'm just giving that back into my floor layer so that now the only two things I've drawn can disappear. So we'll get rid of the guidelines and start by throwing in a window pane. You can see there, sometimes you've got to go back and there's something you kind of get jammed up in the walls and stuff. So, some more guidelines. Get rid of the middle one so that I can make my rectangle nice and easy without a bunch of inferences it's trying to snap to. Window in. Some more layers. Get that window in its own layer. Edit that layer. Um, get some translucent glass in there so that you can see through it. You can see the guidelines behind it there. Now we'll add some casing to the window here so that just gives it a little more finished look. And I'm just going to push pull that around the, the pane of glass. And there's probably a few different ways to do this. Um, if you're looking at this and, and you're thinking, you know, why didn't he just do it this way? It would be much more efficient. Let me know in the comments. Um, any way we can speed this up, the better. So um, there will be a trim detail a little bit later that I edited out because it took me so long to do. And, and I'm sure there's a better way to do it. So if uh, when we get there, if you guys have any ideas, uh, we'd, I'd love to hear them. So now that the frame's complete, we're just going to... Duplicate this by moving it, hitting the control key to modify that move function, and stick it on the other side of that window pane. And there you go, just a basic window. So now let's put some trim around it. And just use the offset tool to get a sixteenth of an inch offset around this rough opening of the window. So now that I've got a sixteenth of an inch offset, I can add my actual trim. Get rid of the face I put on there. And I just did that to make it easier to get a three and a half inch border. Um, so now I give my trim a little depth, put it in a group so that it doesn't get mixed up with anything. And now for whatever reason, my recording software jammed out and it didn't show me adding color to the walls in the window. So I just went back in, grabbed a copy of this room and moved it over. And um, you'll be able to see the, the finished model beside the one I'm about to show you there. You can kind of see it to the right, just so I can kind of show you how we can add different colors and textures to the walls in this room. There's some brick wallpaper. I think I picked ivory, so go with that. Just click the faces and add it in there. And then now we can start adding cabinetry. So we're just coming off the wall an inch to give myself some room for a filler strip. Make our basic box. Cut out a spot for the toe kick. Now we'll make the inside of this cabinet look a little bit like a cabinet.
And this is mostly going to be hidden. It, it really is just uh, more for the client to see, you know, if they want two or three shelves in, in the cabinet or they want no shelves or um, just, you know, the more details we can show them, um, the easier it's going to be for them to make a decision when, when the time comes to, to start the project. So now we'll put this cabinet in the group. Basically, every individual piece is going to be grouped. Um, you can have multiple pieces in one group. You can see there I inverted my measurements, so I just, instead of clicking anything, I just typed in again to adjust the size of that box. We'll get a toe kick again here and repeat the process making the cabinet hollow. Now, because this cabinet's going to have a sink in it, I can show the client that there's going to be no shelves in this cabinet so that our P-trap and everything can fit inside it nicely. Now, I'm preemptively cutting that out for the sink. Um, it'll just make it easier when I go to set my sink on the countertop if there's not a bunch of uh, layers it's got to go through. We've got to start playing with the, the cross-section tools and things like that. For me, it's just easier to cut a rectangle and make it hollow like it would be in real life and carry on. So here's going to show you why we need to have things grouped properly. I got ahead of myself and I didn't get that middle cabinet into a group. And now I'm trying to make some drawer fronts. And as you can see, I'm trying to hide things and it's, and it's jamming out on me. So now when I go to triple click this, it's actually selecting my drawer fronts, which I don't want. So here I decide to just delete that square, get the middle cabinet into a group, and carry on so that when I'm working on the drawer fronts, I can hide all three of these cabinets um, and not have my cursor try to snap to inferences that I don't want it to. So now that those are out of the way, I can bring my drawer fronts in a 16 so they all have a nice little reveal on them, bring my cabinet back so I can measure and find out exactly where I want my drawers to start and stop. So I'll throw in some guidelines. And sometimes for whatever reason, you might bump a key or control and uh, the tool kind of is acting funny. Chances are you hit either control or L and it's using its secondary function of that tool. So um, that can be solved. You hit escape, try again um, and just Keep playing with the control and out until it gets back to, to where you want to be. Um, again, with that said, if, if a tool is not quite doing what you want it to or what you think it should, um, you can try playing with the, the extra function keys, and you'll see what those are in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, but you can play with those functions, and sometimes uh, it helps accomplish what you're trying to do. So we'll bring our four panels for our shaker style cabinet in. And we'll give the inside a little bit of reveal. Um, so now on this one, you can see if you double click after using the push pull, it'll move that object the same as the previous push pull. So I do the first one and then you can double click the next two and just help speed things up. Um, now, because both these cabinets are the same, I'm going to set my reveal away from the cabinet and then I'm going to duplicate these three drawers and bring them over to the other side so I don't have to make them all again. And I'll start by getting a reference line so I know just how far to take it. And I'm just double checking the reveals are good there quick. And we're ready to keep going. So now we'll jump ahead and do the doors to the sink cabinet. Again, basic idea. Use the offset tool to bring anything in a sixteenth of an inch. Separate those doors. Offset tool again for our, our shaker style feature. Um, 
push pull to give it that reveal. Make it a group so it doesn't get stuck to anything and we can duplicate it and move it. Everything's happy. Add our other layers back in so you can see what it looks like. We'll adjust our reveals here and make sure everything lines up. Just throwing up some guidelines so I can reference where my hole in my cabinet is once I get my countertop on and I can't see it. I could use the x-ray feature and not have these guidelines up, but for what it takes, um, sometimes, you know, just knowing those points is handy, so then I can hide those guidelines or whatever. So for me, I, I prefer to use that. Um, I'm going to throw in a filler strip here. And it's these small details here with the filler strips and stuff that, that I really like because you can really show the client um, just exactly why that cabinet can't go against the wall, even though it's going to look like it's right up against the wall. Uh, so add some gables in, I throw my toe kick in. I'm going to put all three of these items on one layer just because, you know, it's, it's really more, again, of a aesthetics thing and, and a detail for the client more than functionality here. So um, those in a group. Hide them, make sure I did my group right. Greasy them perfect. Set up some guidelines so we can throw our countertop on. Again, <laughs> another group. Get that countertop in a group so that we can edit it nice and easy. It's not going to get stuck in anything. Try that color. This color, see what it looks like. And you can see if I select the whole image, I don't have to paint with three faces, I can just click one face and hold. So now that we've got the countertop on, let's put some uppers in. And again with the shelves. Quick guidelines so that I have somewhere nice and easy to snap to with my push pull. You can see me use the double click there to quickly push pull those without having to use that, that line again. Now we're going to put it in the group and move it over using the control key to duplicate it as we move it. And you can you can see there you can do that before or after. So if you're halfway through moving something and go, uh oh, I forgot to hit control, you can hit it mid move and it will duplicate it for you. So now we need some drawers for these cupboards and instead of making our doors, pardon me, so instead of making new ones, I'm just going to use the ones that I've already made and I'm going to resize them. I'm not going to rescale them. So what will happen is if we scale those, um, it's going to change the width of my, my rails and my styles on my door and we don't want that. We, we want to remain with our two and a half inch rail and our two and a half inch style. So what we need to do is we need to actually select 
the, the side that we're moving from in its entirety and just that side and then move it in. Now you'll see here I didn't quite select everything I needed once I get my guideline up for where I'm going. And I have to go back and, and make sure I got all the parts. And then now my middle of my doors aren't the same, so I want to move those two middle styles over to the center of the door. So we'll select them. And we'll get them there. And then repeat the process for the bottom to get it to the bottom. Throw a quick guideline in so we have some to snap to. Select the bottom rails and pull them down to our guideline. We'll make that a group and we'll duplicate it and move it over to the next cabinet. So you can see it's very repetitive. Um, and that's why we make groups and components. And I'll do a video on components later. Um, for me out in Kelowna, there's a company, it's called Westwood Elements. And I've made a component for all of their um, pre-ordered cabinet parts. So when I'm doing up these quotes, I don't have to build each individual cabinet. I can simply make my catalog and then choose the items I need. Um, they've all got associated price lists and cost of install. Um, you know, it really help you stay organized and efficient when you're when you're trying to do multiple free quotes and you know, time is money. So uh, very helpful. So throw some floating shelves in here just to give it a little character. Quick duplicate with the move tool. We'll grab our paint bucket, we'll throw some wood veneer on there. And you can see now, don't really like the fact that I got veneer on the floor there. So I switch it out and put the veneer looks better where it's supposed to go, vice versa with the floor. So got those in. Um, we can add some crown to this now. Um, so this that I'm using is actually an add-on and it's a free trial. Um, it's it's quite handy when you're doing lots of crown work. Um, unfortunately for me, don't know if it's going to be a plugin that I'm going to pay for just because I think I can use the push pull tool as I need to, um, for now. So I think for now I'm just going to stick with the push pull, but we'll put that crown on a group and we'll get our filler strip in beside our upper cabinets. And then I think we'll move on to the push pull and I can show you guys just exactly what I mean by that push pull. And you can kind of see there, that crown isn't it sitting on the cabinet exactly the way it would in real life. Um, but as far as the reveal is concerned and the overall look, that's how it's going to look for the client. So I opted to just leave it. So here we'll make a profile for a baseboard. Now I'm just going to make the simplest profile I can. Um, just to show you how to use the push-pull tool to make a miter. Uh, if this was just a square baseboard. You wouldn't necessarily need to do that, but if this had a very complex profile in it, um, utilizing that push pull to get the miters in the corner is going to help give your designs a nice polished professional look. So we'll get this thing spun and oriented into where we need it to go. Now, sometimes when you're moving stuff, it can be a little bit sporadic. So I like to just every once in a while lock it in either the blue, the red, or the green and get it in a position where I can see the whole thing, grab it from a point where I want and then carry it. So now with the push pull tool, we have to be in the group that that face is in, in order to do it. And what we're gonna ask it to do is we're gonna ask it to follow the line that we've created. So we're gonna go from that corner to that corner to that corner. We're gonna select the lines we made. We're gonna select the push pull tool. And then we're gonna select the face that we want to follow the line. And what's that that's going to do is going to give us the baseboard and you can see here it's mitered in the corner now so you can show that detail to your client now this is the detail that i had trouble with and i edited it out now if anybody knows how to make this drop on the baseboard profile to go under my cabinet i would love to hear how they do that in the comments um, basically what i did is i drew it in three pieces and had to do a bunch of softening of edges and it was very cumbersome and time consuming it took me about 45 minutes to get it in there um, 
But the idea of showing that detail is to allow you to articulate that to the client, the difference between your details where they meet the cabinets and somebody that just notched a square out of that baseboard and slammed it up against it and called it a day. So now we'll hop over to the 3D warehouse. We'll grab a sink. Um, and you can see it's trying to fight with our countertop, but that's okay once we get it where it needs to be, that'll all disappear. So I'm just taking some kind of some rough measurements to see how big of a hole I need for this sink so you can see the drain in the bottom of the sink. So quickly take those. Cut that hole out in our cabinet. Now I notice here that it's looking a little big in there, so I bring it out. And this is where I'm going to use scale because I want it to shrink uniformly on both the X and the Y axis. So shrink it up a bit, grab it from the bottom, set that on the face of the countertop. And now our hole is not quite the right size because we've changed the size of this object. But because I can see into that hole, I'll just edit group and push pull everything where I need it to be. Um, I found that quicker than filling the hole back in and cutting a new one measuring. Throw some guidelines so I got somewhere to snap too quickly. Um, they weren't even an actual measurement, just a rough. So now we can see the drain, the hole inside of the sink. But our cabinet needs a little work, so we'll just push pull that away, tuck it away. And voila, we've got a sink. For some reason that line won't go away and the whole idea there is to, is to show that seamless transition so I just got rid of that line and softened it up. Put our floor back in and go look for some other stuff to, to just give your presentation a little bit more of a polished look. Add some wine bottles and some different things. We'll grab a garbage can and a plant maybe. So just restaling my wine bottles so they fit in my now, if I was really doing this, I would have Googled and figured out exactly how tall a wine bottle is and scale it to that. But for this demonstration, I just kind of John winged it. Put that in the center. That one as well. And Go grab a plant. And then grab what you can. And that's kind of what it's going to look like when you're done. I mean, you can play with this endlessly. We can put, you know, door handles and stuff on. Um, sky's the limit. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe.